angels ascribe glory, honor, and adoration to the King yeah. of Kings and the Lord, Lord of Lords. Lord. Yes, Lord. There is none like you, none, none can, can be compared to you. From the rising of the sun yes, till the do going down of the day, we declare that the name of the Lord alone be magnified. magnified. We extol you, O Lord. You yes, are the Jesus. Lion of the tribe, tribe of, of Judah. Judah. You're the one whose name is answer. answer. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. And I hear the voice of God say victory tonight. We're Amen. Going to get victory tonight. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy, worthy Lord. Lord. Yes, you're worthy. You are worthy. Oh, Lord. you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You are worthy, Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. You're the mighty God. Oh, you're the mighty God. You are worthy, Lord. None like you, none like you. You are worthy, Lord. There is nobody like you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. I don't know you're worthy. How should I? How should I? You're worthy, you're worthy. You are worthy, Lord. I don't know. You are worthy, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are El Shaddai. Yes, you're worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you're worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Be exalted. The mighty God. Oh, you're mighty. You are worthy, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Yes, you're worthy. El Shaddai. El Shaddai, you're worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You're the mighty God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You're the mighty God. No one like you, no one like you. You are worthy. There is Lord. nobody like you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. El Shaddai. Allah Bara. Oh, hallelujah. You are the mighty God. And he let all be Jew. You are the glory of God. Allah Bara. Allah Bara. You are the mighty God. And he let all be Jew. Oh, you are the glorious God. Allah Bara, Allah Bara. You are the mighty God, and He let all be Jew. You are the glorious God. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You, you are, are the, the miracle working God. God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is answer. Your name is, your name is answer. You are the miracle working God. Your name is, your name is answer. Your name is answer. Your name is answer. Your name is, Lord, you answer my prayer, O God, your answer. Your name is, your name is answer, is answer. Your name is, your name 
name is Asa. Your name is my Lord. You answer. Your name is Your name is answer. Your name is Oh, Your name is your name is my Lord, your name is answer, your name is answer, your name is my Lord God Almighty Lord is answer, your name is answer. Your name is Lord, you answer our prayers, O God. Answer. Your name is, oh, you answer, Lord, you answer. Your name is answer. Your name is answer, Lord, you answer. Your name is Ansel. Oh, there's a song that I want to sing. Right now, the Lord is here at dawn for tonight. Yes, Lord. But there's a song that I want to sing just to commemorate what God is going to do here today. And it's, this, it's in Yoruba, but I'm going to say it in English. We're going to, I'm going to say what it means in English, but we're going to sing the song in Yoruba. So it says, All glory. Glory, I'm not a Yoruba person, but I believe the song means that glory be, be to God, the one who answers prayer. Yes. Glory be to the God who answers prayer. I do right, yeah. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, but oh, don't go, I do right. Oh, go, yeah. Oh, Lord, oh, 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 but oh, I do. Oh, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is here. Are done for tonight's prayer session. Yes, Lord. This is going to be our first ever prayer session that we're going to be posting on YouTube. You know, we've been meeting, you know, since February. I was in my consecration in January, but we started meeting, having prayer meetings. But the Lord specifically instructed me to conduct this prayer session and post it on YouTube. So we're going to be posting this one on YouTube. And I believe that that's because God wants to bless the life of someone you know, who, a viewer, somebody that is going to be watching it, uh, you know, afterwards. Because what I see as it were in the realm of the spirit, the Lord is here adorned for rapid success in business. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's exciting. Hallelujah. That is so exciting what God wants to do in our midst. He's here adorned as rapid success in business. Amen. The Bible tells us clearly that God is the lifter of our head. Mm. Is the only one that can cause you to experience rapid success in business. So for those who are business owners, for those who have friends who have just started their business or have been running their business for a very long time and they're believing God for rapid success in business, you are in for a thrill. You are in for a ball of a time because God is here and done for that. Amen. So I want to, you know, just encourage each and every one of us to stay tuned stay pray be engaged because you never know when god is going to 
you know, say something concerning your particular business. He knows you by your name. Amen. He knows you by the business that you're doing, the things that you want him to do for you. And he's going to begin to speak concerning that. I am believing that God is going to give me a word for someone here. But before I start, I want to introduce myself. I am Efimena Ibukumi Olawo. And it's always a great honor to serve as the convener of Soldiers in Prayer Global. Today, we are uniting in prayer, focusing on a powerful and insightful scripture from the Bible. It happens to be one of my uh, favorite scripture. I think it's a scripture that we started praying, my family and, and I started praying this year when God instructed us to. The verse that you know is that i'm talking about or the scripture that i'm going to i'm talking about i'm going to be sharing that scripture later on but the verse has been particularly inspiring to me and my family and i believe it holds profound blessings for all who believe god can do the same for them too to be honest this year has been incredibly remarkable it's been marked by rapid success in business for our children as we had the privilege of mentoring them in business for the very first time. They're still very little. Um, I have a, a son who is going to be turning teenager, but it was a privilege to mentor him in business this year because it was something that he truly desired. He wanted to start his own business Man, and his yes. siblings too as well. Like that was so exciting for us. And yes. when they approached us, of course, it was in line with what God wanted to do for them this year. So I would like to pray the scripture that God instructed us to use as an inspiration. Like I said, it was a very, the last scripture was very inspirational to us guiding our children in business. As we delve into that scripture today, we will explore its depth and intercourse with its profound dimensions through our prayers. My prayer is that God will do the same for us all in Jesus' name, because Amen. that scripture is mind-blowing. That so Everything that God spoke to me about in that scripture is what I would like for each and every one of us to partake of. We are still praying that scripture. Even though we started praying that scripture since January, we're still praying it. And we've been seeing results. It's amazing the kind of results that can happen in the life of a believer when you choose to pray a particular scripture and just you know, intercourse with that dimension until a heavy investment of that grace comes upon you. So yeah. the scripture that I'm talking about, the focus scripture for today is Genesis chapter 13, verse 6. It's a very, very popular scripture. A very, very popular scripture. And it reads, it says, And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. Now, just reading that scripture, you'll be like, um, how is that a, such a profound scripture? Now, let me give you a little bit of background. Now, this verse from Genesis chapter 13, verse 6, emphasizes the practical difficulties faced by Abraham and Lot due to their immense wealth and possessions. They were so wealthy that the city they lived in could not sustain both of them simultaneously any longer. Now, their rapid success had led to an abundance that exceeded the land's capacity, causing tension between their shepherds. It caused tension between their employees, their shepherds. Mm. You know, And this passage of scripture highlights the challenges that they experienced as a result of their great prosperity. Therefore, they had to separate as a result. Now, for those who know me, they'll tell you I often like to deviate from the prescribed order of a scripture text, That's scriptural right. text and focus on something I feel particularly passionate about. And when I do that, I meditate on it deeply. If I find something that I'm particularly passionate about in the scripture, I deviate from the scripture, uh, prescribed order of that scripture and meditate on that one thing that I'm particularly passionate about. And I meditate on it deeply until I connect with that dimension and a heavy investment of that grace comes upon me. Now, listen. Our lives are a reflection of the realms and dimensions we carry within us. I want to say that again. Our lives are a reflection of the realms and dimensions we carry within us. Our life is a report card of the realms and dimensions we carry. Everywhere you go to, whatever you see happening around you is a reflection of the realms and dimensions that you carry within you. Our life shows, shows as a report card to, uh, regarding that. So how do I know this? And no, someone is wondering, what does this mean? How would you say our life is a reflection or, of, you know, the realms and dimension that we carry within us? How do I know this? The Bible says God anoints our head with oil. That's right. And our cup runs right. over. I'm sure you must have heard of that scripture. He says, God anoints my head with oil and is my cup 
that runs over. That means it's the anointing that is on your head that program programs what happens around you. I want to say that again. It's the anointing that is on your head that programs what happens around you. Just imagine the Bible says he anoints our head with oil and it's your cup that is running over. So that means it's the anointing that you carry that programs everything that you see happening around you. Your life now becomes a report card of the anointing, or anointing that is within you. So back to our focus scripture for today, Genesis chapter 13, verse 6. And I'm reading the KJV, KJV version. It's very popular. It's something that you can easily memorize as well. And it says, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. Mm. Now, I would like for us to focus on the language of the scripture. My good God, this scripture is loaded with powerful realms and dimensions in Christ Jesus. I strongly believe that if you can find it in the word of God, it is definitely attainable in your world. Yeah. And your life can be a proof of the claims that you fetch from the scripture. Your life now becomes that report card. Your life now becomes the proof of the claims that you fetch from the scripture. The phrase, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for they had too many possessions, mean, what it, what it, it, it means in essence is, the land in the city where Abraham and Lot lived could not sustain both their livestock and households simultaneously because they had exceeded the land's capacity. Both Abraham and Lot had accumulated a significant amount of livestock, wealth, and servants, and their combined possessions had become too extensive for the land in the city, the land in the city they lived in for them to, for it to accommodate them. Now, it now became incompatible for coexistence as a result of their abundant wealth. Just imagine that. Do you see what I'm saying here? You mean to tell me that it was the sheer size of their possessions that made it impractical for them to coexist in the same city, making it impossible for them to live together in the same area, in the same city, without causing some sort of co conflict among their employees or domestic staff. It was just because of the sheer size of their possession, the sheer size of their wealth that made it impractical for them to coexist in the same city. I found this to be really, really mind blowing. I found this to be so mind blowing because it was simply a challenge of limited resources in the face of great wealth, mm. a challenge of limited space, limited land wow. in the face of great wealth. Mm. It was great wealth that caused the problem, just to break it down. And it resulted in the need for Abraham and Lot to separate to ensure the well-being of their household and herds. What kind of problem is that? Some people may consider it a bad problem. But in some way, deviating from the prescribed order and finding something that you are biased about, I thought that was a good one right there. A good problem. And in fact, I didn't see a big problem in it at all. These two men were too wealthy. Their wealth and possessions surpassed the capacity of the city they lived in. Wow. Imagine your wealth surpassing the capacity of the city you live in. Mm. Or for those who live in Lagos or whatever city you live in. Just imagine. Imagine that for a second. Where your wealth, your own wealth, single-handedly, surpasses the capacity of the city you live in. Your wealth and your possession. Honestly, Genesis chapter 13 verse 6 conveys several meanings overcrowding to, due to abundant possessions. It also highlights the rapid growth and success in life that led, led to their abundant possessions. I don't think they expected their wealth to grow so rapidly. I don't think they expected their business to grow so rapidly. Because Genesis chapter 13 verse 6 illustrates the challenge Abraham and Lot had to face due to their immense wealth and possessions, leading to overcrowding in the land. Their rapid success in life resulted in abundant possessions. It was the abundance of their prosperity that surpassed the capacity of the land. I am trying to talk to somebody here tonight. May the abundance of your prosperity surpass the capacity of the land that you live in. Amen. I want to decree and declare again. May the abundance of your prosperity surpass the city, capacity of the city where you live in. Amen. Oh, I'm praying for somebody here today. Oh, may your business experience rapid success in business. Mm -hmm. May it lead to abundant wealth and possession for you and your generations to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I received that for myself. I received that for myself. Listen, we are going to pray.
and we are going to make some powerful declarations. And I want you to begin to declare that your wealth will surpass the capacity of the city you live in. So much so that it would force you to start buying real estate in other cities because you have surpassed the capacity of the city that you live in. In the fact that you have so many wealth and possession, so many real estate. Declare that the sheer size of your wealth and possession will make it imperative for you to own businesses and properties in other countries. I hey, want somebody man. to talk to the Father oh, today. Yes, I will see. Oh, begin to talk to oh, the Father. father Declare that your wealth father, will father, surpass father, the capacity of the city you live in so much that it will force you to start buying real estate in other cities. Declare that the sheer size of your wealth and possessions will make it imperative for you to own businesses and operate in other uh, own, to own businesses and properties in other countries in the name of Jesus Christ I declare masuta likada branda gazoso tole kada branda gado malikada that my wealth to surpass the capacity of the city that I live in in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Lord will give me business dominance in the mighty name of Jesus I will predominantly own and operate many of the businesses in the city that I live in my wealth to surpass the capacity of the city that I live in. I decree and I declare that I would ex experience rapid success in business. It does not matter when that business started. I decree and I declare rapid success. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I would experience rapid success in business that will result in abundant wealth and possession for me and my generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the sheer size of my possession, the sheer size of my wealth will make it imperative for me to own businesses and properties in other countries because I will surpass the capacity of the city that I live in. Oh, my business will grow rapidly. Oh, somebody talk to the father right now. Prophesy to your business. Declare it will grow rapidly. Declare that your wealth will grow so great. It will become so great. I to surpass the capacity of the city that you live in. Talk to the father right now. Remember, if you can find it in the word of God, it is also attainable in your word, uh, in your world. In the name of Jesus, begin to prophesy unto yourself. Oh, speak to your businesses. Expand, expand in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Malika Rabrondos, surpass the capacity of the city that I live in in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Malika Rabos, Atalika da Brandoso, Leke de Brondoso, Toko de de Brandagado, Lika dozo, Toko de Bragadoze, Teke de Brandagadoze. Yes, and I hear the voice of God say, Ma, the spirit of God that can never lie. I hear the voice of God. He said, Be prosperous in real estate. Thus, this mess, this is for somebody here tonight somebody listening to me i hear the voice of god say be prosperous and real estate yes lord i receive that for myself in the mighty yes lord and i hear the voice of god say yeah right now he said be prosperous in dimensions oh hallelujah Amen. Dimensions are imaginable. Yes, Lord. I, yes, Lord. He said, dimensions that your generation has never seen. Ah, Likara Brando Zoto Colebra. Yes, Lord. And I see oil, oil, an anointing oil coming on somebody heavily, even right now. Oh, yes, Lord. Who on that person? I see properties, 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 properties. properties, properties. And that oil as is pouring on the person. The amazing how the Lord is revealing this. The anointing oil began to spell properties, properties. There's a grace that is going to come upon somebody listening to. Me. and that anointing when it rests heavily upon you the lord is going to begin to give you grace to be able to own abundant real estate Amen. oh the lord is moving already oh i'm excited i received that for myself as well i received that for myself as well listen you are not called to only own properties in the country you live in i want somebody to hear me clearly you are not only called to own properties in the country you live in. You, are, you can also own properties in other countries. Amen. Especially when your wealth and possession have surpassed the city that you live in. Talk to the father of real estate. Remember what he said. He said, in my father's house. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. There are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would, I would have told you. Hallelujah. Your father, your heavenly father is into real estate. That's right. Do you know that the first thing God blessed Abraham with was a land before he got married to Eve. Ooh, I want to wow. say that again. Yeah. Just so you know, the very first thing that God blessed Abraham, um, sorry, not Abraham, that God blessed Adam with. That's right. So, let me make that correction. That God blessed Ab um, Adam with, for some reason their name starts with A, Adam with, is 
a land, landed property, right. before he got married to his wife, mm. Eve. So if you're a single guy listening to me today, there's nothing wrong in you owning abundant real estate before you get married. There's nothing wrong in you owning your own property before you get married. That's right. This is God's will for you. How do you know the will of God for you? Is what he does. How what, what he does tells you what he wants to do in your life. Mm. So if he did it for the first man, who happens to be Adam, surely he wants you to have the same thing too. So you have to believe God. That's why I said if you can find it in the word of God, it is also attainable in your world. Mm -hmm. And you have to have faith enough to believe that God can do the same thing for you too. Mm -hmm. It's so important for you to know that. So a single man here listening to me, a single woman here listening to me, you can own your pro own properties before you get married. Now, I'm not saying that that should be the prerequisite to you getting married or telling yourself. I told my son the same thing. So he's still very young, but he already knows that. And that's something he's also inspiring to have. He understands that this is the will of God for his life. This is something that God would want him to have. So he understands that he will be owning his property, his own property before he gets married. He will be owning his own house before he gets married because it's within the will of God for you. If you can find it in the word of God, you know that that's God's will for you too as well. That's right. So let me give you a modern similitude to the abundance of Abraham and Lot's property, surpassing the capacity of the land they lived in. It could include scenarios such as real estate development. Mm. Just imagine acquiring vast amount of land for development, leading to scarcity of land where others don't have land to buy anymore. Mm. There's a term in Nigeria we call omo onile. For those who are Yoruba now, let me correct what I said earlier on. I said I'm not Yoruba. I'm married to Yoruba, but I wasn't born Yoruba. So I struggle with some of the Yoruba terms but I know a few of them. But Omo Onile was very, very, very popular in Nigeria. You hear that a lot. And what the term um, actually means, that phrase you know, means, it means children of the landowner. I want to say that again, children of the landowner or descendants of the landowner. It often refers to individuals who inherit land and properties from their forefathers. Right. So these individuals typically have strong ties to their ancestral land and, they, uh, and you know, are regarded with a certain level of respect and authority in the community, in their communities, their respective communities. So, but the last time I checked my Bible, oh, hallelujah. My Bible also tells me that the earth is of the Lord's That's right. and the fullness Amen. thereof. Amen. So I'm also Omonile. In fact, I'm the original Omonile. If you're a child of God, you are the real Omonile. Because the Bible says that the earth is of the Lord's. It belongs to your heavenly father and, and the fullness, fullness thereof. And because you are a child of God and he is the Lord of Lords. Lord, Lord means owner of all. Mm. The owner of the land on the face of the earth. All the land that you see on the face of the earth belongs to your heavenly father that should make you so excited therefore you are also a monile you are a child of a landowner the monarch of the universe so i want to talk about a story you know this is a story about a country that i visited this year and you know i went there for businesses and and other things that i needed to do and when we visited that place it was shocking to me we at a, we were at a particular restaurant and we talked to one of the um, I would say the supervisors in that restaurant, and he was giving us a brief, brief background about, you know, the history of where the rest restaurant began and why they are in that location. Even though that was a very nice location in where, where they were, but they were in a much more lucrative lo lo location from what he described to us. And I said, okay, but why would you move from such an amazing location to where you currently are right now? And then he mentioned, he said, in this country, um, most of the lands in the country belong to the owner of the, you know, the, um, the they call them like the um, the kings and the, the, the I would say the, mo the monarchs of the, of the land. And he said they usually own 90% of the property, predominantly all the land in the, in the, in this, in the, in the country. And if you're going to buy a property there, they only give you for, they only give it to you for like 10 years. So they had bought a property in one of uh, the, that, uh, uh, lucrative um, location that they formerly were and after 10 years they were told to move because the owner of the land has now come and he's saying that you know what we would like to build a massive uh, you know hotel world-class hotel here mm -hmm. and we're going to pay you guys off even though you've built your businesses here your business here and you, you paid for this land you know but you do understand that you were only given 10 years in this property i'm trying to say something here the only reason why they could do that was because they own the rights to that land it belongs to their family. So listen, when God places you in a realm like that, mm -hmm. 
mm. where you are able to acquire vast amount of land for development. It can lead to scarcity of avail available land for others. Mm. And this means that when others seek to buy land, they will often be told this land belongs to the Olawo family. Insert your name there. That's right. Ah. We see. I receive. Just like the way they will say to them in that in that country, this land belongs to this family, this this monarchs, you know, it belongs to this royal family. We cannot, you know, you can't own this land permanently. It does not belong to you permanently. Because at the end of the day, when they want their land, they come back. So when God placed, that's why I'm trying to give you a, 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 a scenario here. That when God places you in a realm like that, where you are able to acquire vast amount of land for development in a city or in a country, and it, it belongs to you, it can lead to scarcity of available land for others. And this means that when others seek to buy land, they would often be told, this land belongs to your family. This land belongs to the Olawo family. So they have to come to you to buy the land. You are the only one that can sell them the land. And if you choose not to, no matter the amount of things they offer, they say, okay, I do believe that I'm going to be able to, you know, start a lucrative business here. I would like to buy this land. It does not belong to you. And they will not be willing to give you that land if they don't, if they choose not to. So I am praying for somebody here today. Let it be known that when others seek to buy land, they will hear this land belongs to your family. That's I don't right. know who I'm talking to. Somebody talk to the father. Mm -hmm. Talk to the father of abundant real estate here. Mm -hmm. I am praying for you that it will be known that when others want to buy land, they will hear this land belongs to your family. Amen. So you want to talk to the father about this right now and begin to pray. Let it be known that when others seek to buy land, they will hear that this land belongs to the Olawo family. So insert your name. That's oh, right. prophesy to yourself right now. Masi Calabra, ask God, ask God to expand your territory. Lord, oh, bless Lord. me and expand my, my territory. territory. Give me territorial yeah. dominance in the I name of Jesus Christ. Masu I declare abundance and territorial dominance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let it be known that when others seek to buy land, they will hear this land belongs to the Olao family. Amen. Because the Lord has given us the realm of Omonile. Oh, declared Kasuta Lida Brandada, you are a child of a landowner. Amen. Do you know that your, your father owns Amen. all the land on the face of the earth? He said, The earth is of the Lord and, and the fullness Amen. thereof. Amen. Oh, begin to declare, declare, let it be known that when others seek to buy land, they will hear that this land belongs Amen. to the Olao family. Amen. When others seek to buy Amen. land in the city that I live in, oh, they will hear that it belongs to the Olao family in the mighty name. Oh, dear. oh, for the Lord shall bless me and he shall expand my territory in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare abundant territorial do dominance in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Masuta Kalika Branda Gadozede. Ah, Leka, give me territorial dominance, oh God. Malika, give my generation territorial Amen. dominance in the name of Jesus Christ. Masoto Kolede. Let it be known that when others seek to buy land, they will say and they will hear. Ah, Makalika Doza Takada, this land belongs to the Olao family. Yes, In the name oh, of Jesus Christ, they would have to come to me. Masi Calabra, they would have to come to my descendants. They would have to come to my children and my children's children and my children's children. Because all they would hear and all they will continue to hear is that this land belongs to the Olao family. Oh, talk to the father. Oh, talk to declare abundant territorial do dominance. Abundant real estate is yours if you can just ask God. Masi Calabra, Doza Lord, I ask for territorial dominance here today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of the scripture, oh God, I believe it, oh God, that you will do the same thing. Let Amen. there be a distinctive similarity. Yes. Lord, you said that their wealth surpassed their land, the land they lived in yes. greatly. Oh, it can be done for me too as well. I declare abundant real estate over my generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Real estate dominance. Territorial dominance. In the yes. name of Jesus Christ, I receive for my generation as we pray, oh God, let a heavy investment of this grace rest heavily upon me, rest heavily upon my children, rest heavily upon my husband, over my generation. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy unto myself, aha, territorial dominance. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh, they possess the land for wherever my generation steps in their food, aha, whichever country it is, they possess. Possess that land. land. Come and do that which only you can do, oh God. Let this grace rest heavily upon us as we enter into this dimension. Let our life be a report card. 
all of this claim that we have fetched from the scripture in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof oh I will be called and declared the child of the most high God the child of the land owner of all land owners oh because it belongs to you it belongs to your my father then it belongs to me ah because he says in my father's house there are many mansions and if it were not so you said you would have told me my father is into real estate he wants to bless us with abundant real estate here tonight oh let that grace rest of heavenly upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I see as it were in the realm of the spirit somebody is blessed with abundant land and the Lord on that each land this is what I see as it were in the realm of the spirit recession proof recession proof appreciation aha I receive in the name of Jesus Christ ah anointing oil see an anointing oil pour on somebody right now who and i see as it were in the realm of the spirits this is good i love this one i want to prophesy this one as the lord is showing me clearly this is for a pastor here there's a pastor in the nation of nigeria and i see as it were in the realm of the spirit there's an anointing that is coming upon this pastor right now and the man is the lord is going to do it so much so that he's going to be able to build an auditorium i see a massive auditorium for this pastor right now it's it's so beautiful and I see the advanced technology that is in that church. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, li karazota li da branda gado soto li kada branda gede li broko do soto and I ooh yes Lord and I see as it were in the realm of the spirit Jesus is standing in front of this particular pastor mm-hmm. and his hand is coming upon him and he said prosper in ministry eh hey, le kerebo he said I give this to you oh hallelujah mm-hmm. Lord I receive grace karabra for abundance real estate mm-hmm. I love what you're doing in our midst here today mm-hmm. oh hallelujah mm-hmm. thank you Jesus aha ma li karabo zoto ko this is 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 getting exciting here today. I'm loving what the Lord is doing here. Amen. I am loving what He's doing here. Now, here's another modern similitude. Another modern similitude to the abundance of Abraham and Lot's property. Ownership of extensive automobile. Mm. So I'm giving you another modern similitude to the abundance of Abraham and Lot's prosperity, surpassing the capacity of the land they lived in. It could also include a scenario such as this ownership of extensive uh, automobile fleets now just imagine you and your family possessing numerous cars to the extent that several entire parking lots are needed to accommodate them and i'm talking about your Lao family again like i always say insert your name i didn't come here to play <laughs> i came here to pray for myself too as well so when you hear me mentioning my name i'm i'm also hoping that you're inserting your name where you want god to bless you where you want god to because i'm very biased I'm, I'm i'm this is for me I am asking God to do this for my family and I'm hoping that you're asking God to do this for your family because it's in the word of God. We all have access to the scripture. It's right there. It's right there in the word of God. So I'm giving you a modern similitude to the abundance of Abraham and Lot's prosperity surpassing the capacity of the land they lived in. When God began to break open the scripture to me, and he began to speak to me about the things that he can do in the life of his children, what he wants to give his children. And he was telling me that because he has done it in the life of Abraham before, and he did it for Abraham and Lot, he was, he's also going to do the same thing for us. And he's going to give us a distinctive similarity. Yeah. <laughs> mm. A modern similarity of what he did in the life of Abraham and Lot. That's why I'm so excited about the scripture. So we're, we're talking about ownership of extensive autom- automobile fleets. Just imagine you and your family possessing such. Such numerous cars, such numerous automobiles. Name it, you have it. Man. To the extent that several, several, several parking lots are needed to accommodate, accommodate them. Now, I'm so some, some people say, oh, well, this is vanity. You know, some people can be so spiritual that they're not earthly good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, oh, this is vanity. Go back to the scripture. He said their wealth was so great. God does not have a problem with, uh, with you being wealthy. Let's go in, go back into the scripture. Go back to and look at your ancient forefathers. They were very wealthy. And they had so many possessions. The Bible lets us know that. And then when you talk about Solomon, his own wealth was on another level. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, David, oh yes. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to be talking about them today. We are focusing on this scripture, the focus scripture of tonight about Abraham, was, uh, Abraham and Lot's wealth surpassing the capacity of the city they lived in. So God wants you to own these things. 
And so for those who feel like, oh, well, this is vanity is vain. Don't worry about it. Leave it for those of us that think this is God's will for us. And this God wants us to have it. And we pray it. But just find something that you can in here to pray that you feel like you're comfortable with. And when you feel like, you know, when you want to grow in realms to that level, you can always ask God for it. Remember, but do remember though. Remember this. The Bible says, he anoints our head with oil <laughs> and our cup runs over. It is the anointing that you intercourse with here. That heavy grace that comes upon you, that programs all these things that I'm saying, it programs it and it allows it to begin to happen in your life. So you choose one. So now, now let's talk about another modern similitude of the abundance of Abraham and Lot's prosperity, surpassing the capacity of the land they lived in. Dominance in business ownership. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. I just love that. Businesses in the city you live in is predominantly owned and operated by your family and your descendants, shaping the economic landscape of that nation. Just imagine what your God can do for you. After all, he did it for Abraham. He did it. You know, he did have, Abraham was very wealthy. That's why we always pray, Abraham, we've sang this song, well, most of us have. Oh, Abraham's blessings are mine. Why are we saying Abraham's blessings? Because we knew, the Bible said, he was blessed in all things pertaining to life. And yeah, godliness. Hallelujah. So you can be wealthy and be godly at the same time. For those who fear that, oh, having too much wealth and possession will make them unholy. No. No. You can be wealthy and godly because the Bible tells us that Abraham was blessed in all things pertaining to life and God. And yes, Lord, I'll do that. I'll pray the ram. God wants me to pray ram. Cut and the ticket, please remind me. So now, dominant in business ownership. And so the, where your, the businesses in the city you live in is predominantly owned and operated by your family by your descendants, and you shape the economic landscape of that city, of that country. Just imagine imagine another one, corporate influence, mm. where companies owned by your family become major employers in the country or city that you live in, with a significant portion of the population working exclusively for your companies. Mm. Oh, hallelujah, I received mm. that. I see. So I'm mm. praying for someone here today. May God grant you corporate influence Amen. with a significant portion of the population working exclusively for your companies. I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. Somebody prophesy unto yourself. Declare that a significant portion of the population will work exclusively for my company, become companies, because God is going to give me that. Declare that you would have corporate influence. Talk to the Father right now. Amen. Lord, I declare corporate influence. I walk in this realm in the name of Jesus, where significant portion of the population would work exclusively for my company. I declare corporate influence in the name of Jesus Christ. I walk in this realm. Ah, with a significant portion of the population working exclusively for my companies in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare significant portion of the population will work exclusively for my company. Because the Lord would anoint me with corporate oh, influence. Ah, look at a dimension that is uncommon. Look at a brand uncommon grace. Kali brandozo is going to rest upon me, upon my children, upon my husband, for uh, upon my generations to come. Ah, where they would have corporate influence, where significant portions of the population will work exclusively for them. Lord, you would also grant them business dominance. Oh, where they will predominantly own and operate most of the businesses in the city they live in, shaping the economic landscape of that city. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Business dominance, corporate influence in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my concerning you, my children, I decree and I declare, you would predominantly own and operate most of the businesses in the city that you live in, shaping the economic landscape of that entire city and that entire country to the glory of God. An uncommon grace that will rest upon you, a grace that your generation must recognize in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, significant portion of the population will work out predominantly for my companies in the name of Jesus. We shape the economic landscape of the country. That grace comes upon my family. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I hear the voice of God say, prepare 
from business dominance. I don't Amen. know who I'm talking to I here, Lord. See. I receive that in the name of Jesus Christ. I oh, see. Lord, I receive business dominance. Yes. Oh, where I own predominantly, predominantly own and operate most of the businesses in the country, yes. in the yes. city that I live in, shaping the economic landscape of that city. Ah, Makali Kadosa Libra Gadoza Takarara. Oh, business dominance. Lord, I receive that grace here today. I receive that grace. La Brando Zoto Kota Branda Gadoze Take a bro. Yes, and yes, Lord. Again, the Lord is repeating this. It's a flourish in business. Oh, I receive. Aha. Le Carabondo Zota Kaleraba. Lord, I will flourish in business. My children will flourish in their businesses. My husband will flourish in his business. Whatever we whatever business we start, we flourish. We would experience rapid success in business. Ah, that will result in abundant wealth and possession to the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Ma leke de brondo zata kalida brando zoto kode de kedebo. Ma leke de broko da satai la brande gede. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our midst evil right now. Ma le broko da zata kalida brande gede. E kedebo soto li bragado. And I hear the voice of God saying this. It was said in Yoruba. But I saw angel uh, Gabriel interpreting it in English for me. So that's how I knew what it was. It was said in Yoruba. So I know maybe I'm, I don't want to conclude that God is saying this to a Yoruba person or somebody in the nation of Nigeria. But I heard it said in Yoruba by Jesus. And then in Jagebra is interpreting it for me. And he says, he said, in my father's house. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. There are many mansions. Yeah. And if it were not so, I will tell you. And I hear the voice of God said, I want to bless somebody here today. Here today with abundant real estate. Lord, I receive, I receive. it. <laughs> hey, for my generation, I receive Ah, lika rabo za tali na brande gede. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Ah, lika do so to le branda gado za ta kali na brando so to kode de kasata kali na branda gado. Eh, le bro unai si ya. Aha, kali ka do za li brando so to kode de kali na brande gede. Le bro ko do so to kode de kasete gede. I see somebody's wife. Somebody's wife starting a business. And that business is growing so rapidly. Ah, I see this business in UK. I see this business in UK. Oh, hallelujah. Likara brando zota kalida branda gadoza ta kalida brande gede. Oh, and I, yes, Lord. Ah, yes, and I hear the voice of God say, it's a brand new realm for her. A brand new realm for her. Thus the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Eh, le bronco dosa ta hila branda gadoze. Sisi grace. And I see as it were in the realm of the spirit. Jesus is holding her elbow, the left elbow and the right elbow. And he's putting an anointing oil on the elbow. And he's saying, more grace to you. Ha ha. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, grace. Grace is coming upon some people. Here tonight i'm receiving grace uh -huh. ah, for those who are listening to me who would get a chance to listen to me you are here you are like the ramp cutting the ticket you are at the right place at the right time oh thank you jesus thank this you is lord. wonderful what the lord is doing in our midst today now let's talk about real estate empire mm. and that'll be the last one and i'll end with that real estate empire acquisition of vast land holdings for commercial and residential development transforming the physical land environment to family owned empire i want to say that again this is where you acquire vast land holdings for commercial and residential development. Mm. This is not just so you're, 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 you're acquiring it just to have a property or two and then you rent them out. No, you are acquiring this vast land holdings for commercial and residential development, transforming the physical land environment to a family owned empire. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. These commercial residential properties belong to the Olawo family. If I were I you, I wouldn't insert your name. Like I said, I didn't come oh, here to play. To when God see. asked me to do this, this is the first that I'm doing this yeah. year that I'm going to be posting on YouTube. And I'll see. be posting on our TV network. Uh, you know, that we also, you know, we also we've been, you know, added to a TV network. So we'll be posting that there too. This is the first this year. And I'm like, God, are you sure these people are going to believe that it is possible that you can do this in their life? That's right. That's right. I don't doubt it because of what the Lord did this year. Mm -hmm. What God did this year blew my mind. We're going to be sharing a lot of that in our prayer buffet party uh, at the end of the year. So we're, we're marking down, we're counting down. It's been an amazing year, an amazing year, an amazing yeah. year. So amazing, but extremely busy. I thought I was busy last year, but this year, <laughs> busy self. <laughs> it was so busy, it was like, whoa. But I thank God for grace and the, the results that we've been receiving. So understand that god wants to do an amazing thing for you and it's for those people who have faith enough to believe it do you believe that god can bless your generation mm. with real estate empire i don't know about you but i believe that where you would give me the grace to be able to acquire a vast land amount of land holdings for commercial and residential development transforming the physical environment to family owned empire for generations to come let me give you an example commercial real estates they refer to properties used for business 
purposes, including apartment buildings, offices, retail shops. I don't know about you, but you should, you should think about the idea of, or, or the, just the thoughts that God wants to bless you with re retail shops. So much in the city, a lot of them in the city that you live in. You just imagine apartment buildings, you own them. Mm. Name it, the Olao family. Again, insert your name. <laughs> insert your name that's right so just name it offices for business purposes these are commercial real estates now let's talk about investment properties that one excites me a lot investment properties are acquired solely for investment purposes especially in the context of hotels resorts just imagine the return on investments this is so mind-blowing and this is, this is one of the things that god wants to do and this is because he's trying to help somebody build a real estate empire for generations to come now think about land we talked about the earth is of the lord and the fullness thereof and a land is the, is the baseline for all type of real estate properties land is the baseline uh, baseline for all types of real estate properties so land typically refers to undeveloped properties and vacant land yeah, and vacant land developers and investors acquire lands to secure their financial future because land appreciates so you want to own land but the thing though is that the, the, the all the land that you see on the face of the earth it belongs to god and god can give you those land he can give you landed properties he can give you give give you property uh, lands in abundance if you believe him for that now industrial real, real estate any land utilized for manufacturing, shipping, storing, or other industrial purposes is known as industrial real estate. Now, there are many other types of real estates too as well. Um, parking lot real estate. Now, parking lots is the thing now in some countries that are overpopulated. You you know, people pay for parking lot. People pay for parking. You know, so, and there's something called parking lot real estate for those who do not know. Commercial kitchen, that's another one. For those who own commercial kitchen, people rent commercial kitchens for many reasons. Right. You know, they you know they want to store their product, they want to be able to cook a whole lot, but they don't own a restaurant. Or even if you do have a restaurant space and it's limited, you can make these meals in commercial kitchen. So people do have commercial kitchen and it's a form of real estate too. And people pay monthly for that. Apartments, houses for rent, Airbnb. So when God told me that this is a modern similitude of, to the abundance of Abraham and Lot's prosperity, surpassing the capacity of this, the land that they lived in. He said, you know, if we can just believe that it is possible for him to do the same thing, for us to owe, for him to help us have real estate, to own real estate empires, which is the acquisition of vast land holdings for commercial and residential development, transforming the physical land environment to family-owned empire. If you can believe that God wants you to have a family-owned empire in the realm of real estate, then this is for you. All this, though, can lead to overcrowding of the land if you're the one that has most of these things and you are experiencing rapid success in life and in business that has that, that results in abundant possession and wealth for you and it can yeah. surpass the capacity you your wealth can surpass the capacity of the city that you live in i don't ever want you to th think that oh i'll like just you know because a lot of times the enemy wants you to have like a small mentality you know and i do believe the, there's a mentality for the wealthy the wealthy wealthy people do have a, some sort of wealth mentality that's what the bible says as a man thinketh, so he is so before you can be wealthy you have to have a wealth mentality hence the reason i always joke with the people in soldiers in our prayer meetings soldiers in prayer global i always joke with them and i tell them this one thing that even the uh, the man that died uh was it lazarus in the bible yes. who died and you know and he was he said it, having he was instructing abraham giving Abraham an instruction to go and, you know, help him talk to his brothers. Look at the mentality. He still has a, a boss mentality, even in hell. <laughs> so there's a rich mentality, you know, for the rich. You, you, know, you, are, you are not one that sees yourself as a servant. You're not one that sees yourself limited or small. You think big. You think about what God can do. And I love the scripture. The, the scripture is a wonderland. The scripture tell, gives us ideas of what God can do. But until you are able to see these things in the scripture and you believe him for those dimensions, you may never see it happen in you. You may never see it happen in your life. You, you need to know what can be before you can pray it. You need to know that it's even possible in God. These are dimensions in Christ before you can say, Lord, I believe you for the same thing too. 
So I'm, I'm here to express what God has been speaking to me about some people. He's been talking to me since July 4th, to be honest, you know, and he's been telling me, you know, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I kept saying, Lord, you've given me a whole lot of things to do this year. We're mm. still working on those things. That we're, we've accomplished most of, a, a lot of them, but we're still on it. And then you want me to do this. And that's because God loves you so much and he wants you to partake of what he wants to do in your life and this is it rapid yeah. success in business That's can right. i prophesy to someone here today prophesy. may this be your portion in the mighty name of jesus Amen. ah may this be your family's portion in the mighty name of jesus listen Amen. if you can find it in the world i'm saying this again if you can find it in the word of god it is attainable in your world That's right. That's right. your life can be a proof of the claims that you fetch from the scripture Amen. that i saw it in the word of god now it is my realm this is my life and people can see it people can say it this it looks like this particular scripture and you can tell them and it's amazing though because when people talk to you and this is one thing i always tell people when you get to a point when when god starts doing this in your life it's not just sharing the testimony that oh i you know i made it you know i'm now very successful god you know i have this property and that property no let them know the scriptures that you prayed it's an opportunity to share jesus is, a, is an opportunity to showcase what Jesus can do in the life of those who believe his word. That's right. Who can spend time praying his word, mapping on his word, meditating on his word, until a heavy investment of that anointing rests on you and your generation. So I want you to talk to the Father tonight. Ask for a distinctive similarity of what he did for Abraham and Lot. Declare that you would experience rapid success in business that will result in abundant wealth and possession for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, I don't think Abraham and Lot saw it coming. If they had known, they would have planned well. It was just all of a sudden a fight broke out between the servants, I would call them the employees, a modern term for them, the employees of Abraham and the employees of Lot because they were all part of his, his domestic, their domestic staffs. And they got into a fight, not because the wives were upset with each other. These were the servants that like, were fighting for space here. Wow. And the reason why they were fighting for space is because they had experienced rapid success. Mm. Rapid success of wealth and possession. And they didn't know how to, you know, live peaceably. The land, is saying they surpassed the capacity of the land. If you look at the scripture again, let me go back to that scripture, Genesis chapter 13, verse 6. It says, and the land was not able to bear them. It was the, and, the, and I love, I love the scripture for one thing. He told us the reason why. So let's focus on the language of the scripture here. It says, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. So that they could not dwell together. The reason why they could not dwell together was wealth. And the, the not ordinary wealth, great wealth, substance that have, has grown great. And the reason being is they, I don't see, I don't think they saw it coming. I don't see the, I don't think they saw it coming. And that's why God said, I want you to prophesy to my children. I want you to tell them that I want to bless them mm -hmm. with rapid success in business. They won't see it coming. Oh, hallelujah. They won't see it coming. And it will result in abundant wealth and possession for them. And I said I should declare that they would experience, uh, they would have abundant real estate. Amen. The kind of real estate that will surpass the capacity of the city that they live in. And it will now force them to begin to have real estate in other countries. Amen. Oh, the Lord wants you to, you know, own abundant real estate in 2024 and for the rest of your life. And he also wanted me to declare dominance in business. Amen. Where you predominantly own and operate most of the businesses in the country that you live in or the city that yes, you live Lord. in. Yes, shaping the economic landscape of that yes. city. He wanted me to declare corporate influence where companies owned by your family will become major employers in the country that you live in or the city that you live in with significant portion of the population working exclusively for your businesses. Amen. So we're going to begin yeah. to pray this thing one last time. We're going to begin to talk to the father right now. Malikada Brando Zoto Kodedekese declare rapid success in business. Oh, I don't know about you. If you are here, oh, you are here at the right time. Likada Brando Zoto, speed. Declare speed in your business. It's possible to experience speed in business. 
Talika Dosa Takarabra and Dosa Talika de Debro. Speed that is uncommon. Oh, an uncommon speed in business. Ah, Lera Brondo Zetekede de Let the hand of the Lord come upon you right now. Let the hand of the Lord come upon your business. Ah, Likarabosa Takarabra. Where you begin to experience speed, rapid success in business that will result in abundant wealth and possession for you and your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare corporate influence where a significant portion of the population will work exclusively for your companies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the carabon, those are dominance in business. Uh -huh. Where you predominantly own and operate most of the businesses in the city you live in, let's shape in the economic landscape of that city, even that country. Or oh, begin to declare abundant real estate that will surpass the capacity of the city you live in. Abundant real estate Amen. that will surpass the capacity of the city you live in and force you to begin to own real estate in other countries. Amen. There is nothing impossible with the God that you serve. Ah, malekere brando Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Begin to do that which only you can do in this place right now. Oh, let lives begin to transform in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, and I see as it were in the realm of the spirit, there's an anointing oil that is coming on a pen. I see a pen. Somebody is signing a document for real estate. And I see the anointing that is coming on the pen itself. And I see signature, not one document, two, three, four four five six oh and i see the number 16 ah amen. i receive amen. in the name of jesus amen. christ i receive amen. oh it is mine it is mine it is mine amen. there is nothing the lord cannot do in this place amen. oh hallelujah yeah. oh the lord said if you can believe the word if you can believe god that there is nothing impossible for him oh just believe he said if he's, he said with man it might be impossible but with god all okay. things are possible. Oh, yeah. oh, I love the God that we serve. You, I've seen miracles happen. Yeah. I have seen things that are dumbfounding. Yes, the things that I never thought could ever happen so quickly. I have seen them happen even this year. Yeah. I want to give God all the glory and honor and all the adoration. The God who is the God of real estate. He said in my father's house. There are many yeah. mansions. Yeah. If it were not so, I would have told, told you. you. The God that Bless the first man, Adam, with a property first before he got married. <laughs> I just want to thank God for today, for what he has done in our midst, for the dimensions and the anointing that we begin to experience. For some people, you know, you may start seeing yourself in dreams and revelation, as the Lord is showing me. You may start seeing dreams, revelations, where you will see an anointed man or woman of God. He may come in the similitude of tonight, and he would now begin to bless you with things. Just believe it, hold on to it, pray, and begin to walk what God has shown you. Uh, prophecy is like pregnancy. You pray until you give birth to it. So when you see yourself in dreams and visions and you're receiving landed properties from God, documents being signed and given to you, you know, money being given to you, do not be afraid. Do not doubt it because this is something that God wants to do with for you. And I'm already celebrating with you. I'm thankful for the transformation that you begin to experience to think that this is what God wants for his children. Rapid success in business that will result in abundant wealth and possession. So much so that it will surpass the capacity of the city that you live in. Amen. Oh, we have come to the end of today's prayer session. I trust that you have been blessed by this message and the prayers we shared as well. As God has guided me to lead this prayer session about rapid success in business, may you continue to be blessed and strengthened by it in the mighty name of Jesus. And may everything that we have prayed be your portion to the glory of God. Thank you for joining us. And may you remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.